scorpion! This classic steel looping Schwarzkopf looks like a basic looping family coaster. And in many ways, it is. But boy, is it fun. Despite its size, Scorpion offers a bit of everything you could want on a roller coaster. From a forceful loop, to an enjoyable helix, to some other elements sprinkled throughout. Find out why this coaster is better than it looks in this review. Anton Swarskoff built some of the best steel roller coasters in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. These include most coasters that look like the steel looping roller coaster from Roller Coaster Tycoon, including traveling roller coasters and shuttle loops. Most of these coasters were smaller in size. With the success of Six Flags Over Texas' Shockwave and Six Flags Over Georgia's Mindbender, being Schwarzkopf's, there were also some of the tallest and biggest coasters of their days. These coasters are known to pile on the G-forces, with crazy forceful loops, as well as forceful other elements. Scorpion is one of only three Silver Arrow models developed by Schwarzkopf, and the only to remain permanently in its place after construction. Although other similar Schwarzkopf's have a curved drop in a loop, the Silver Arrow model goes back through the loop as well as having a nice, powerful helix towards the end of its run. Scorpion was Busch Gardens' second coaster, and it is the oldest coaster still standing at the park. This is obvious when you enter the cramp station as there's not a whole lot of room to move as you wait to load the train. As Busch Gardens can get busier, it would be nice if a second train existed on Scorpion to help make the line something that one doesn't have to worry about. But with only one train, a line can occur here as with any other coaster at Busch Gardens. The trains offer a simple individual lap bar restraint which should leave you free to enjoy the various forces of this ride. There isn't much in the way of airtime off the drops, so the main force you will enjoy is the laterals or the G-forces through the loop. I didn't notice much difference between the rows, so you should be fine wherever you sit. After departing the station, you go immediately into the lift hill. The curved drop does offer a small drop sensation. Not great, but slightly better than it might appear to. The loop is crazy forceful, as you would expect. Not as much as other swatch crops, which are fighting for the most G-forces on any inversion, but enough to make it enjoyably powerful. The large turn after the loops are okay, as you have a sense of speed, but nothing here truly stands out. Going back through the loop is a nice touch, as always, and the helix at the end of this ride is forceful and actually enjoyable. I have lamented about other coasters that focus on helixes and how they're boring and not exciting, but the forces here are enjoyable. Not perfect, but solidly enjoyable. For a quick comparison, I prefer this helix to the giant one on Six Flags over Georgia's Goliath, and it's really not even close. Overall, how good is Scorpion? Despite looking like the old family looper that it is, this coaster holds its own with any decent medium-sized draw. I rank it right below the terribly rough but enjoyable mind blower at Fun Spot Kissimmee. And right above, Iron Shark, the Eurofighter at Galveston Island's historic Pleasure Pier. There may be coasters better than Scorpion out there, but I could be happy riding a roller coaster like this for a long time. What are your thoughts on Scorpion? Is it still good after all these years? How does it compare to bigger and better coasters? Let me know. And as always, a pun crap.